So cochlear implants are used for patients that have a severe to profound sensory neural hearing loss. In my younger years, my teenage years, I would go to rock concerts and stand right in front of the large speakers for, and listen to the band. And that's the way I, I was part of the band. Unfortunately, at the time, I didn't know that it was ruining my ears at all. And I, not until the later years, I'm, I'm paying the price for it. And I, I can't hear as well as I did earlier. That and his job, there's a lot of machinery there and it was loud. And I've just noticed the last probably, we've been together 25 years, I've just noticed the last 10 years a, a really severe decline in his hearing. And it, it, it causes issues because I talk to him and I think he hears me and he doesn't. And it's just, it's a communication issue. So we're just hoping that this will help so that he can hear and he can be more involved in, in his kid's life, his grandkid's life, you know. This is the surgically implanted device that gets implanted in your inner ear, okay? And you have the receiver, you have the magnet, and then you have electrodes that are spaced down at the bottom of that little spiral right there. So what happens is that sound, the way that we hear, sound is a series of vibrations that gets funneled down through the ear, down the ear canal, and then enters your inner ear, which is called your cochlea. And that little eardrum and those middle, middle ear bones, they help send that signal down into the inner ear. In that inner ear, you have thousands of these sensory cells called hair cells. And there's anywhere from 20 to 30,000 different hair cells depending on the patient. When someone develops a hearing loss that's progressed to a severe to profound level, there's damage to those structures now. So on a neural level, you have damage to those hair cells, um, which can no longer transmit sound signals clearly to the brain. So that's why a lot of my patients, like we were discussing, say that they can hear and detect really loud sounds. They're just, that clarity is not there. They just can't make out and comprehend what it is that they're hearing. And so what a cochlear implant does is you have a little magnet and a receiver that sits behind your head and then they have a little electrode array that gets threaded down into the inner ear and these electrodes work in lieu of those hair cells so now instead of you sending signals through those damaged structures that can no longer send that clear signal you're using an implant with electrodes that's sending electrical stimulation down the auditory nerve to the brain so essentially it's doing the work of those hair cells, okay? And just like a piano, your inner ear is tonotopically organized. So you have low pitch sounds that are based right there in the little um, apical region of the cochlea, and then your high pitch sounds, which are on your basal end, which are on the outside. And so depending on where those electrodes array end up in your inner ear, you get a nice access to low and high pitch sounds, which allows you to gain speech comprehension and understanding again. A cochlear implant is the only option that's going to restore sound at the neural level. This on its own in your inner ear won't work. It needs an outside sound processor to make connection with the internal magnet. By doing so, we can take sound from the environment through these microphones, convert them to electrical stimulation through the contact of the magnets, which then sends that sound signal down into the electrodes and then up to your brain. Hi, I'm Erin, Associate Director of Education and Global Hearing Health here at the House Institute Foundation. Thank you for watching our video. If you would like to support research, education, or global humanitarian efforts, please consider donating by clicking the link in the description box below. Be sure to check out our other videos, like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you can get notified anytime we post. Thanks!